Hi everyone, welcome back to Behind the Sound. My name is Leslie and today we're talking to Messi Hera. We're here to talk about their latest release in the ruins and much more. So hi, how are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> Could you please introduce yourself for those who may not know you? Okay, so I'm Maddie. I am the singer and guitarist of Messi Hera. We're a three-piece band based out of San Diego. And yeah, that's really it. Uh, so how did you guys come up with the name Messi Hera? So we had a whole other band name before when we were in like middle school, but then like a bunch of things had changed throughout the years that we were playing. And then we thought like, let's just totally rebrand. And Hera is like the Greek goddess of like womanhood and marriage and like basically everything that a woman should be. And I wanted to like use that to contradict like our music because that's totally not what a woman should be, like an ironic thing. But that was already taken. So I really liked the name though. So I wanted to put something else and I thought messy in front of it would go well. And people say they like it. So I guess it worked out, but yeah. Yeah, I personally like it. I think it's very unique. How did you guys meet? I, uh, you mentioned middle school. So how did you guys come together? Yeah, so there's this like company called School of Rock, not the movie, but <laughs> it's basically like they take in a bunch of kids, they teach them how to play whatever instrument they want, whether it's like guitar, bass, keys, drums, all of it, or even singing. And I went there for singing. My drummer went there for drums, obviously. <laughs> and then me and him met there. And then our current bassist, Talia, who also can't be here because she's traveling right now. I met her through school, but Ronan, my drummer, already knew her through School of Rock. So we all kind of just were friends there. And then we thought, I mean, this is a perfect group all three of us like why not start something out of it and then it brought us here <laughs> it's really interesting you guys recently released a new single titled in the ruins is that correct yes so what inspired the name of the title and kind of the theme of the song so it's actually kind of a crazy twist that we took with it because we used to write songs more just about like regular things that happen in your life but our newest member is our bassist her name is talia she is Syrian and she grew up in Syria for the first three years of her life and then she really wanted to write a song like she's been trying for years even before she joined the band to write a song about everything that's going on in Syria and I thought this is a perfect opportunity so we wrote a list of things that are going on and we wanted to try to make lyrics we kind of worked on it together and then it's called in the ruins because a lot of violence and, and they're getting bombed a lot and everything and I thought like this is what's happening in the ruins. Like that was kind of the meaning of it. But we want to apply it to other things, like anything else that's happening in the world that's similar. And so we didn't want to be like, this is only about this. But yeah, it was a cool twist though. So then what would you say is overall the message of the song or what do you want fans to take from it? What we want them to take is just like, we can't ignore this. Because what we're saying in the lyrics is like, well, we're just chilling in our houses, not really worrying about anything. There's horrible things happening that we can help change and bring into the light. And that's what this song is trying to do. It's kind of just bringing awareness to the situation and saying like, they need help. And some, there he is. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> there was a lot of traffic. So no, you're good. I'm talking about in the ruins. But some of the lyrics are in Arabic for the song. Talia would know more than I do, but it basically just translates to like, they need help. Like we need to help them. Mm -hmm. And it just, brings awareness to the situation. Are there any particular lyrics in the song that hold any special meaning to either of you? Ooh, I think because like we're not affected by it personally. So kind of like the parts where we say we need to help them while we're doing this. Like there's a lyric where it's saying, while we watch our stupid TV show, they're watching their families lose their glow, which is basically saying like, well, yeah, you're kind of right. Like, we're not really doing anything here. We Like, this is a way we can help. And there's more ways we can help, too. But for Talia, I feel like it's more personally connected to her since it's a part of her life. So, but I think it's really cool still. <laughs> you mentioned the process of how you guys sat down and wrote the song. Is that normally how your songwriting process looks or is it different every time? You want to take this one? Since you're yeah, <laughs> um, I feel like it's like oh, about the same all the time. Like, Maddie comes up with a guitar riff and I'm like all right I'll see what I can do on the drums for that <laughs> true he kind of just goes wild like yeah <laughs> so that's typically how you guys work and collaborate when you compose music correct yeah like I would write a riff on guitar about something that has happened 
like that and makes me mad basically a lot of our songs are just very angry and then I would write it sometimes I write lyrics for it already sometimes I wouldn't and then present it to them and be like here's what I did and then we kind of all work together to like change it like the recordings that I initially put down on my phone are like usually way different than what the song turns out to be which I think is really cool that we like work together on it it's not just one person did you guys experiment with any new sounds or anything in particular with this new song I think I think so there's a lot of transitions that yeah there are it. like a lot of our older songs are very straightforward mm-hmm. just like verse chorus verse chorus done bridge done but this one has like a lot more breakdowns and like there's different languages that are being put into it and I think that's probably I think like each song we write we want it to be our best song Mm -hmm. as like it goes on were there any challenges that you guys faced while writing the song or the production of the song I think it was mostly just because when you go in the studio a lot of things change sometimes like there are a lot of parts in the song that a month prior there was nothing like that in there so I guess it's just I wouldn't say it's challenges but it's like progression and we just keep adding more do you think your sound has evolved since like your first release to this current one absolutely (laughs) yeah our first one was like like I said verse chorus verse chorus bridge done and I think we just stemmed from a lot of more just regular punk influences in the beginning and then now we take a lot more as we grow and because like we're still so young we've only been playing for two or three years I think yeah like we're coming up on the three-year mark I'm pretty sure yeah yeah but like it's so much different but in a very good way I'm glad Mm -hmm. that it's different (laughs) who are some of your big musical influences what would you say well I'd say mine just as the drummer it would be Joey Jordison from Slipknot and the Rev from Avenged Sevenfold but it, it, it could it's it could be different from yours. No, yeah, I think it's cool because you have, like, I feel like that's what kind of makes us separated from, like, just a regular punk music is because yeah. you have your own drum style. Yeah. And then I get influenced for more things like Destroy Boys or Bikini Kill or Daisy and the Scouts, like a bunch of female-fronted Riot Girls or punk music. And I think whenever we, like, mesh it together is what makes Messy Hero what it is. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. Who are some musical, like some artists that you guys are listening to currently that maybe your fans might be surprised that you're listening to? <laughs> you have many. Oh, <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of Wu Tang Clan, <laughs> Mob Deep, and then I'm I'm also kind of getting into like modern rap. Like there's this one underground rapper that I mess with. His name's Laser Dim Seven Hundred. Oh think yeah. Anybody like really knows him? You have to like kind of be in the know. But he's he's starting to get more popular. But I'm honestly listening to like a lot of rap and not a lot of people know that. Yeah. I think for me, it's like, I started getting more and more and sort of into like the hardcore music, like Tsunami and Drain and all of them people. But also I kind of, I also like some rap too. I really like Tribe Called Quest or The oh, Far yeah. Side or Digable Planets and all that. And I feel like people would get shocked by that too. But I don't know. It's like, it doesn't go within the music that we make definitely, but it's still pretty cool that there's like, a broad selection yeah definitely where do you guys get your creative influences from yeah for me mainly yeah. my parents yeah because they've been musicians in the past and same with my grandparents I'm in a very musical family <laughs> so uh, ma- mainly just my parents for me I think same for me like my dad was in a band in high school my brother he's been in a bunch of bands we play with them sometimes and like they both just share with me all these things and then it leads me to learn on my own like I find my own music that is based off of what they have showed me which I think is really cool what inspired you guys to start in the music industry individually and then together you go first uh for me (laughs) I kind of I will ever since I was like a little kid my dad was in like a band back then and he's had this drum set in my basement we used to live in New Jersey so like we had like basements and stuff but I'd always just go down there and just start like hitting random things on the drums and I was like two and my dad has like videos and then when I was like around seven I like picked up a guitar and I, and my dad's like I'll sign you up for guitar lessons and I was like okay and then I <laughs> okay. like a day after I was like actually no I want to do drum lessons and I, I I was I'm a really big fan of my old drum teacher his name's Eric C or Eric Cohen I think shout out Eric yeah shout out to Eric <laughs> and he's like inspired me to learn 
all these like different fills and like how to become like a metal drummer. And then I, I kind of just passed that on like throughout all these years since I was seven and now I'm turning 16. Damn. Oh yeah. Your, his birthday soon. Did you ever pick up the guitar again after not? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I used to write some of our riffs. I was going to say you helped couple, out with some of yeah, the riffs. I helped actually. out with like a lot of them back then, but <laughs> I don't really d write any riffs right now. I just learned stuff. Yeah. <laughs> My story is kind of similar because I've always been surrounded by music and I tried so many different things like so many different sports but none of them just like connected I guess with me and then I saw that my brother was doing a bunch of music stuff and then I was like I was very shy but at one point I was like okay I want to also be happy so I, I gave it a shot and I joined School of Rock and then I learned I took vocal lessons first and then I did guitar later on because I joined at School of Rock they also do these show groups and mm -hmm. I joined one that was called Riot Girl and I had no idea what that was but after I joined it I was like wait this is really cool and then I did so much more research on it and I thought like this is something I want to do like I want to be a part of a band and I want to play all these shows and then I already knew what the local scene here was like because my brother was in it so I got a little bit of like insight on that and I was like I want to do this like this is something that would really excite me. And then whenever I found Ronan and I found Talia and everyone, like it worked out so well. <laughs> Before we get to the rest of this video, I wanted to give a shout out to our latest endeavor, the Upstate Sound Academy. I'm sure you already know the music industry is constantly changing. Every three months, there's like something new we got to figure out. And for those just starting, it can be pretty intimidating because it's not just about making music. So what we're doing is developing these free tools for you guys to use. From where to sign up to collect your royalties, how to write a proper artist bio, how to make great content. We even have what we're calling a pocket mentor. That was kind of our flagship chapter because I didn't have a mentor when I started. So I wanted to be able to provide answers for the questions you probably don't even know to ask yet. So if you're interested in receiving these free tools, just email academy at theupstatesound.com and we'll send it right over to you. I'll even hop on a call with you and learn more about you and what you got going on because we do know everyone's path is different and we're a new age label here at the Upstate Sound. So follow for more. Back to the video. You mentioned, both of you mentioned that you come from families who, are, who have been involved in music. Were they excited and very supportive of you guys when you guys got together? Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, they were, my dad specifically, because he has experience of being in a band he's like before I got my license because we started in like middle school like he would drive me to the shows and he would like help me pick out the guitars I like wanted and all that stuff but it was that's really cool we got very fortunate yeah definitely yeah so you guys are pretty young so how do you balance kind of your personal life your social life with like your music and all of that bro it's hard yeah it is <laughs> it's uh... so hard I'm not quite sure if I have an answer for that. I just kind of go with the flow. I just, um, I, I don't know. I just wake up, drink some milk, and then go to bed. <laughs> you wake up, drink milk, and go to bed. Yeah. That's your day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I do a lot of, like, the business side of things. Like, I would reach out to the venues yeah. and try to get the shows together. So it gets hard sometimes. Like, I would devote entire days to, like, doing band-related things just so I could have the rest of the week and like we've had big shows during like our finals week like we played House of Blues opening for this band Odeboke Beaver and the next day I went in and had to take my psychology final and I was like so tired it was so bad but yeah that's insane I can't imagine doing that yeah Are you both still in school yeah. yeah I imagine you're in high school correct because you're yeah we both yeah, are. yeah we we're both in I had both of you are in high school. Mm -hmm. He's going, you're going into junior year and yeah. I'm going to senior year. Are you excited to graduate? Yes. Very. <laughs> oh my God. Do you have like any plans after graduation? Like, are you going more into music or do you know what you're? There's this girl who, rec who records all of our stuff, almost all of our stuff. Her name is Amelia. I love her very much. She's very sweet. And I was telling her that I was interested in being a sound engineer. And then she said, dude, let's totally meet for coffee. And like, I could tell you all about it. So that's what we did. So that's something I'm definitely thinking about, like doing mixing, mastering of songs, recording them and live like sound too. It looks so interesting, but I don't know. It's still a little while from now, but it's very interesting to me. No, that sounds, that sounds pretty cool. And you're going, you said junior year, correct? Or yeah. Junior, are you excited? 
I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of nervous for it and I'm not a big fan of school so I'm, I'm not that excited for That's it. That's valid. <laughs> You're more than halfway done, basically. Yeah, I am. So kind of going back to In the Ruins, how have your fans reacted to the song so far? Yeah, they love it, but I think they're also shocked. Mm -hmm. Because there's no, like, whenever we look at the local bands, of course, all of them write about really important things, but we haven't really done that yet. Because a lot, like, for New Best Friend, that's just about, like, someone leaving you for blah, 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 and then for Fuck You Flaker. I don't know if I could cuss, sorry, but... (laughs) Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but like Flaker, it's like, oh, this person flaked on me. I'm so upset. And that's like things that you can relate to on an everyday basis. But In the Ruins is about something way more than that. And I think people were definitely shocked about it, but I think they really liked it. Do you think that you guys would want to write more songs like this or kind of going back to how it used to be? Oh, I definitely want to write more songs like this. For yeah. Sure. We, and I feel like that's the direction we're going in. Like we, uh, I agree. We have a couple like not to spoil we have a couple, <laughs> you know, a couple songs in the making and they're all a lot more advanced than our old songs for sure I agree yeah we wrote I'll just say it guys but I, but we wrote one about how like people and I said it from my perspective because like I've experienced this of like women feeling very uncomfortable in certain places like if they're just walking down the street and this and that and just and we call it put it to an end which is like trying to say like, we need to stop this. Like, this is something that is really horrible. And like, there's ways that we can stick up for ourselves and just teaching people to do that. And it doesn't even have to be just women. It could be anybody, like anybody who feels uncomfortable in a certain setting, because that happens to everybody. I think that's a really cool idea. And I really like the name. And I think also, like you said, I feel like people don't really realize that a lot of people experience that. Yeah, exactly. Well, that you guys are writing or have a song coming out about that. <laughs> we're going actually. We're going to a studio right like today, and just like tweaking it up a little bit. So maybe within like the next few months or so, it'll be out there. But <laughs> possibly. Uh, did, you, did you guys have any favorite like moment or any challenges that you guys faced while writing in the ruins or any song? I think I think it was hard because we recently recently as in like a year ago got a new bassist and that what took some adjusting because there were already yeah because there were already so many pre-written songs that we had with our old one but then of course we want like we want everyone to have their own creative freedom so like we had to kind of rework everything to make sure it was okay so not really any specific songs but the songs we already did and they sound a lot better I mean now that we like revisited them and like made them what they are now I have no regrets like it sounds so much better Mm -hmm. but it was definitely a process and it definitely took a lot of work and patience for it but it was definitely worth it how how do you think that you guys individually and as a band have grown since your formation I think well we're all like a lot more comfortable with each other now like at first I was afraid to like speak up and say like could I do this this way or could I do this that way but now I'm like comfortable to say like, hey, like I kind of want to play this <laughs> and I kind of want to play that. So, yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. It's great when you all like each other. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. But like, I think, yeah, also just like with the crowd, because the more you play and the more you reflect on how you play and what you do is what makes you better. And like after every show, like I would always think like, OK, I could have done this or I could have done that. And like I asked around, I'm like, what do you think I could have done? Because I want like whenever you perform, it's not just performing like you are entertaining the people. And like you can always tell by the crowd's reaction, I feel like if they're into it or not. But it's always like working on that, too. And then working together to make sure we all on the same page. Like it definitely is a process, but it, I think we're doing pretty well. <laughs> So outside of like you as an artist, more into like the individual, how has this band and how has the music industry kind of helped shape you and has helped you grow individually and personally? I think I've been, I've gotten a lot more organized because in the beginning of this, you don't know what you're doing. Like it's very hard to do it, but I think it just makes you feel, it made me feel more confident of myself. I feel like too, because before I was always second guessing, like, should we cover this? Should we do it like that? Will the people like this? Like, what do I do? And then you get kind of overwhelmed, especially because like, like I said, you don't know what you're doing, but 
as you keep going on, like as I kept going on, all of us, I'm sure, and just kept going with what we thought was right, then it just grew, made our confidence grow a lot. And I think that shows with like performances and our songs too. We didn't just stick to what we thought people wanted. <laughs> I think I think you said it all. Like how you feel playing your first show ever is a lot different how you're going to feel like 25 shows later on. Absolutely, yeah. So what advice would you give to aspiring musicians and bands that look up to you guys and kind of want to do what you're doing? I'd say don't stop. Like keep trying because mm-hmm. you're going to make it. Mm-hmm. I'd say don't be afraid. Yeah. <laughs> Because I was very afraid. I'm sure we all were. It put like, put like a wall up and I was just like very secluded. But like, you just have to be open to a lot of things and you have to just go for it. Like fear cannot stop you because that just misses opportunities that you thought you could have had. What's a piece of advice that you guys received in the past few years that kind of helped you or, or like stuck with you? I don't know. I'm not quite sure, actually. Yeah, (laughs) these are good questions. Oh my God. But um, I've second guessed myself a lot. And I always kind of think like, no, because ever since we played, whenever we played House of Blues opening for that band, like I never thought we could do something like that. So what I did was I reached out to the guy who owns the record company for the band that we opened for. And I was like, hey, do you have any advice? Like we need it. We want to grow. And he was like, just be relentless, like reach out to people. If they don't respond, reach out to them again and keep asking. And I was like, okay. (laughs) But like that kind of just swings back to like, don't be afraid because I was definitely afraid. And I think now that I kind of have that guard down, it's just, it's a lot easier and a lot more fun. I know you guys mentioned that you guys are going to the studio later today. Uh, So are there any upcoming projects or albums or something like that that we should be looking forward to? So (laughs) we recorded, I think this is a few months ago, we recorded three songs and we're planning to have them all be singles. And then what I was thinking, what I was thinking was that like by the end of my senior year, like this will be the project that we do is like maybe we write enough songs to make an album and I really hope we can get there but writing songs is hard so (laughs) but definitely a goal that's really cool I noticed on your Instagram that you guys are on a break right now currently yeah and could you talk a little bit about why you guys are on a break um yeah well it's mostly just because obviously our basis is not here right now but she is visiting family in Syria for a little while. And then shows get booked out so far in advance. So there's not a lot of availability in August, when she, which is when she comes back. But in the meantime, we're just going to keep promoting and writing more songs. And hopefully by the next time we play, there'll be more for people to hear live and possibly more to record and to release. So we're not gone. We will not be gone. We will not be forgotten. Yeah, but <laughs> definitely not. Are there any upcoming shows or any plans for any upcoming shows? I'm working on that. I mean, I don't know. We've been playing the same venues for a little while. We're trying to get stuff closer to like LA because we're based out of San Diego. We're trying to get stuff in LA and trying to play more outside of just our little home, little hometown, which is San Diego. It's not that little, but <laughs> but we're, I don't know, just a local scene. We love playing here and we love the people. We love the community. We love the venues that get us in these shows are very sweet people and you guys have a dream venue (laughs) i'd want to play at either sofi stadium or Mm. madison square garden oh yeah those are good ones yeah i want to play the rose bowl man that would be crazy (laughs) what are your personal dreams for the band and then individually i don't know destroy boys is like one of my favorite bands and they kind of started whenever we did like whenever they were around our age and they go on tours all the time they're on their like fourth or fifth album right now I want to do that like I want to do what they're doing and that's just like a total dream and making a living off of that like dude that's fun that is fun as fuck like oh my god what would you think um yeah I I definitely want to become successful in this band but if I can't do that I just want to become successful in music in general because I've been like putting a lot of hard work into this I, I just want to become successful in music. Yeah. That's really that's cool. 
You guys mentioned your dream venues. Is there a dream country or state that you guys would want to perform in? Whoa, whoa, that's cool. Country? Oh, I never thought about yeah, that. Country. I feel like it would be cool to play in like England or something. <laughs> yeah. I want to perform in Italy. Oh, yeah. My great grandparents immigrated from there. And there's like a whole village with my last name. Really? Right? That's how good he was. So I'm trying to go there. Let's play there. Let's, get, yeah. let's do it. Yeah. For state, I would love to play in Washington, D.C. Because that's where a lot of my influences are from. Like, oh, I think yeah. that would be really cool. I want to play in New York. Ooh. The state of New York. That would be sick. Mm-hmm. That is really cool. What are your goals moving forward with the release of this single and then with your upcoming music? After we released our last EP, our, I don't know what happened, but our Spotify listeners, they were going so high and I want to keep that growing. And that's why I'm like, we're kind of releasing these within like a few months in separation. So we just like stay relevant kind of. And I just want to keep the audience growing and I want people to hear more of our new stuff because I feel like a lot of the stuff we have out is still like old-ish and like we've progressed a lot more and I want people to see that. Yeah, I just want to keep growing. I want to keep releasing. I want to keep writing and yeah, cranking them all out. <laughs> so to conclude, where can people find you guys on social media and on music platforms? Ah, well. <laughs> like, they can find us pretty much anywhere you could think of like we're on amazon music that, that that's what i use but <laughs> spotify are we on soundcloud no no okay <laughs> we'll SoundCloud, do that though no. <laughs> you, you find us on youtube instagram tiktok yeah messy hero band for yeah. all the social medias and then just messy hero on anything else that's yeah listenable <laughs> well thank you so much for your time it was great talking to you guys yeah, uh, thank you for having us This was Leslie with Upstate Sound. Make sure to check out In the Ruins and stay tuned for more from Messy Hera. We hope that episode was informative for you. If you're interested in being interviewed by one of our associate writers and being a part of Behind the Sound magazine, just contact us at info at theupstatesound.com. And also, don't forget to like, comment your favorite tip about this episode, and subscribe. We have all our channels on Instagram, on YouTube, and on TikTok. And we also got a new series called Upstate Legends, where we highlight a lot of the local talent that we have that have graced us with their presence at the Upstate Music Studio. But for now, that's all we got, and hope to see you in the next one. You guys take care. Thanks.